Okay, logistic models. Okay, recall that. Hello? Recall that if the rate of change of y is proportional to y, then y follows an exponential model. So this right here just tells us that if the rate of change of y, so dy dt, is proportional to y, it equals ky. Um, yeah, that is on the AP review. This will kind of help you. Um, in this particular situation, the dy dt represents the rate of change of y. And k is some constant of proportionality. Proportionality. Wow. All right. If we were to integrate this and solve for y, who remembers what that equals? C, E to the K, T. Good job. All right. And we, we actually, when we start, we're doing um, differential equations. We actually separated our variables, integrated it, solved for Y, and that's what you get. All right. Now, this model is only valid under ideal conditions and unlimited resources. So basically, this is, this is a growth population model, and we use that quite a bit. But in reality, a population often increases exponentially in its early stages, but eventually levels off and approaches its carrying capacity. And the carrying capacity is the maximum population that the environment is capable of sustaining in the long run. So, like, if you have a cage of rabbits, then they'll reproduce for a while, but eventually some of them are going to die off because there's not enough space or there's not enough sp food or whatever. Um, so that's what's happening here. So the logistics model incorporates the fact that the relative growth rate decreases as the population P increases, and it becomes negative. Your growth rate becomes negative if P ever exceeds its carrying capacity. So if you exceed the carrying capacity, then some of your population has got to die off, and so the population will decrease. All right, the simplest expression for the relative growth rate that incorporates these assumptions is known as the logistic differential equation. And the logistic differential equation looks like this. K is your constant, some constant of proportionality. Capital P is the, initial, is the population. And capital K is the carrying capacity. I don't like the fact that your book uses two Ks, but they do. And so I used it here. And the biggest thing that you're going to have to recognize out of this formula is the carrying capacity. So if P, if your population is relatively small compared to K, capital K, which is your carrying capacity, then what would DP, DT approximately be? So the population is really small compared to the carrying capacity. Yeah, just KP. That's actually what I was looking for. Because P over K will approach zero, and KP times one is just KP. Yes, this is a little K. Okay, I'm going to use a like. I'm going to do a cursive K. K. P. For okay, so that's little K. That's big K. <laughs> All right, as P approaches the carrying capacity, so capital K is your carrying capacity. As your population approaches the carrying capacity, then what will DP, DT equal? Zero. zero, or it will, yeah, it will approach zero. So what we're saying is as your population approaches your carrying capacity, so therefore P over big K is approaching one, then you'd have 1 minus 1 or 0, then the rate of change of the population is 0. So as your population is approaching that carrying capacity, the change in population will be 
zero or at least very, very small. All right, if your population is between zero and your carrying capacity, then will the rate of change of your population be positive or negative? population is between zero and the carrying capacity, then the rate of change of the population will be positive, right? Because your population is going to increase until it gets to the carrying capacity. Um, and if the rate of change of the population is greater than zero, what does it tell you about the population increasing? And if your population is greater than the carrying capacity, then what can you tell me about DP, DT? Yeah, it will be decreasing, or it will be negative, so less than zero, and therefore the population is decreasing. Okay, so if we look at number one, it says a certain population growth is modeled by the differential equation DP, DT equals 0.08P times one minus P over 1,000. And the first thing we want to do is identify what the carrying capacity is. Now, this general formula for a differential logistic growth pattern is, or this general formula for, this general formula for the differential logistic equation, you don't need to have this memorized. You just need to be able to, when you're given that formula, find the carrying capacity. So as long as what's in parentheses is 1 minus P over some number, then that number is your carrying capacity. So in this case, the carrying capacity is 1,000. And that's all you have to be able to pick out of that formula. Now, it's not always going to be in this form, and in a couple of minutes we're going to have to put it into this form, but if you can get it into that form, then all you have to do to identify the carrying capacity is look at that denominator inside the parentheses of 1 minus P over a number. All right, a slope field for this equation is shown. Sketch solution curves for initial populations of 100, 400, and 1300. All right, so back to slope fields. It's been a little while since we've done this. Um, if your initial population is 100, then that means when time is zero, we're starting about right here. So if you draw the slope field, you just want to basically follow, which is really hard to do. If you're starting at 400, something like that, and you should tech, you always want to extend your graph to the edge of the slope field. So you want to show that kind of horizontal asymptote going along there. And if you're starting at 1300. That was good. It would look like that. Okay, where are the slopes the smallest? And let's do it in terms of the p values, the population values, so the y values. So where are the slopes the smallest or le least steep? Okay, where p is getting really, really close to a thousand, or which is the carrying capacity, because that makes sense because your rate of change is going to be very, very small. Um, there's another place where the slopes are pretty small. Right, at the very beginning, when P is close to zero or like down, down here. Obviously, if P is zero, you're not going to get any population growth, but if P is very, very, very small, then at first, yeah, like two then at first the slopes are going to be really small and then get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> all right, all solutions of this graph move towards what y value? 1,000, which happens to be your carrying capacity. Where, okay, I'm going to go back. 
Okay, the next part E is where are the slopes the greatest? What y value are the slope? Does it look like the slopes are the greatest? It is. It's at 500. Any? Did you just look at that graph, or I mean, how'd you come up with 500? Yeah. And if you look at if you look at any column, the steepest slope is going to occur at 500. What's the relationship between 500 and the carrying capacity? It's half of it. Your slopes are always going to be the steepest at half the carrying capacity. Carrying. It's a weird word. All right, so in your slopes will always be the steepest at half the carrying capacity. All right, solution curves that start below P equals 1,000. So those are, that would be the red one and the green one up here. We'll have inflection points where? Where will your inflection points occur for if you start below, if your population starts below your carrying capacity? Also at 500. Okay, well first, let's back up. What is, what is an inflection point? Okay, it's where the second derivative is changing signs, or on the actual graph, it's where the concavity is changing. So you can kind of see that when I, on these graphs that I drew, your concavity is changing from concave up to concave down at some point. And it's right at 500, which is also always going to be half the carrying capacity. Yes, it's a 500 on the Y. And the reason for that is the slopes are at a maximum. And if your slope or your first derivative is at a maximum, what's happening to the second derivative? It's changing signs. Yep. So it all kind of relates together, amazingly enough. So your greatest slopes and your inflection points will always occur at half the carrying capacity is the moral of that, of E and F. Okay, solving the differential logistic equation. Are you making fun of my story? A little? Okay. Oh, well. All right, if you solve the logistic differential equation, which I wouldn't expect you to do, you don't really know how to do that, then you would get that the population equals this formula right here, and then you have this random A, and you've got this right here. I don't really expect you to, I don't think that they expect you to know this formula. The only formula you need to know is the DP, DT, and be able to recognize the carrying capacity. But I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. But I do want to practice finding the limit of P of T as T approaches infinity. So I want to take this P of T formula and find the limit as T approaches infinity. The limit as T approaches infinity. Anytime I'm taking limits and I have negative exponents, I think it's helpful to rewrite it as a fraction. So I would have big K over 1 plus A over e to the kt. So, yeah, e to the little kt. So as t approaches infinity, what's happening to e to the kt? It's getting bigger and bigger, and so a, which is a constant, yeah, something that's constant over something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger is going to approach zero. So that whole term is going to approach zero, so this limit equals big K, just to make sure that you understand between small K, little K and big K. All right, let's think about what that means. As, as time goes to infinity, your population is approaching Big K. Well, what does big K represent? The carrying capacity. Carrying capacity. 